I'm Piers Sellers, and like Michael said, I was the project scientist for Terra before Yoram, and I'm very glad for NASA and for me it was that way around, because he'd have been a wretchedly hard act to follow. So um, I don't really have a single memory of Yoram when he wasn't either smiling or laughing. And he was usually just kind of quietly amused, but I could flip into outright joyful. And he was one of the most profoundly gentle, intelligent, sensitive people I've ever met. And one of nature's gentlemen with all the gentlemanly virtues. He was kind, humorous, selfless, considerate, and generous. And I never saw him self-important. I never saw him angry. Um, I got to know Yoram Kaufman in 1984, I think, when he helped me a lot with radiative transfer for free. And later on, he and I were both members of the dubious brotherhood of EOS Project Scientists. And the high point of our week was to meet every Friday in Michael's office, where we'd sit around and drink his horrible coffee <laughs> and uh, talk about EOS and science and make fun of each other. And Yoram, Yoram excelled in every field, in every activity. And his hard work and his humor really helped us get through a lot of the tough years of getting the uh, Earth Science Satellite spaceborne. It was a big part of all our lives. And we all thought and still think that it was very important, worthwhile work. And Yoram had a huge hand in it. So there I was thinking that Yoram was just this kindest, gentlest human being without a vice. Well, so I thought. But there was a surprise. There used to be a habit in 923, that was our little branch with Jim Tucker and other friends here, before it became 614.4. I think. <laughs> yeah. Some of the 923 mafia, Tucker, Holborn, and other criminals, we'd, they'd force me to borrow a plane from College Park here. We'd fly over Blue Ridge to Garrett County, West Maryland, and land on this microscopic, ice-covered runway. It was uphill, crosswind, both ways, <laughs> if that's possible. And then we would go and ski. We'd walk down and ski at Wisp for $15 a day. It was a great deal. And fly back in the dark. Now, Yoram got to hear about this. And he comes along to my office and he says, hey, can I come? And I said, yeah, sure. And he had this demonic gleam in his eye. It's something I'd never seen before. Anyway, two days later, Brent Holborn, myself, and Yoram and Nadav meet on the side of a runway before dawn. We cram ourselves into a cess and we flutter out over to Garrett County, dodging the 747s of Dallas. And then we started to ski. And it was a face-off between Yoram and the Dove from the get-go. <laughs> Snow gladiators to the death. Brent and I ran for cover. We were standing on the side of a hill. We saw the Dove come down about 60 miles an hour in a fabulous skier's crouch, eyes narrowed, butt in the air. Just a streak. Ten seconds later, down comes Yoram in a skier's crouch, but on his back. <laughs> and he's shedding cheap rental ski equipment. <laughs> And it went on like that all day. Brent and I, we could hear yells, the sounds of snapping dwarf pine trees, <laughs> and the occasional double thud of falling Kaufmans. <laughs> it was an epic. <laughs> and eventually we loaded this bruised and battered, but very happy Yoram back into the plane, and we flew back, and he slept in the plane, just like he does in lectures. <laughs> the next day, he limps into my office like this, and he says, Piers. When are we going again? <laughs> and that, that was Yoram. We all loved him. We'll all miss him terribly. Husband, father, scientist, and, and good friend. And the world's really a far better place for having had him in it. Thank you. <laughs>